Okay, I call this annual meeting of St. Brendan's Episcopal Church, two quarter. Um, the agenda is inside your leaflet. And uh, the first list of the agenda is the ele opening of elections. We have one um, candidate for vestry, and that is Joe Sheppey. We are in need of a second candidate. Is anyone interested? We have a lovely vestry. I keep the meetings to an hour and a half. I don't see any volunteers at the moment. Um, if you feel the spirit calling you within the confines of this meeting, um, we can add you to the, the uh, to the to the list. Karen, thank you. Yes, I nominate Michael Rowcraft. Mm -hmm. Michael Rowcraft, are you willing to serve on the vestry for the next three years? Uh, I am now. <laughs> Uh, we've had a wonderful vestry that's done a lot of hard work. 
Um, and I want to especially thank um, Rob Smith, who's been our senior warden, and um, Jeff Fujioka, who's been our junior member warden, um, as well as Dee Smith, who, along with Rob, is going off the best year. So I, I'm very grateful to everyone's work, and uh, um, I'm hoping that we'll have as much fun next year as we did this year. Um, we will be having a very brief meeting of the new members of the vestry and the ongoing members of the vestry after this meeting so that we can elect officers. Okay. Um, Review of minutes from the 2022 annual meetings. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, can I have a motion that the, the uh, minutes be approved as presented? So we will. Who, who moved it? So Barbara moved it, right? Yes. Okay. And um, Tamara seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. The minutes are approved as presented. Um, do you do both the, um, Lori, do you do both the um, financial report and the budget? I believe so. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you then. Do you want to bring it up here? Mm -hmm. No, I leave all that up to you. <laughs> um, because it did, I thought it did when I when I filled it out. I didn't. I didn't change it. Okay. Well. 
Well, that must be an error because the rents were 8,045, not 5,061. It looks like um, it looks like when to put rent and other income, that five thousand dollars is the eight thousand and the negative twenty nine added together. Oh yeah, you're right. Good point, Joe. So does that make sense? Did everybody hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what the negative is from is from our investment account that we have um, with the diocese. Um, with the national church. With the national church. Um, and so we were getting paid dividends all along, but we, our, our, our uh, original balance went down because, well, I think you know why. Everybody's, Everybody's original balance. Yeah. So that's what the loss was. In there. So the next section are there maybe if you guys want to look at each of those and let me know if you have any questions about any individually designated account. The first column, of course, is a little bit different than the budgeted. What this is, is it's showing that at the start of 2022, we had this balance. So for instance, in the rector discretionary, the balance was $808.93. And we received additional income in 2022 of 634. And we paid out $598.43, which should have left a balance here in this one. So that's what it's showing you on this. And these, yeah, Rob. Go ahead. Oh, and these designated accounts are just what it says designated. People are giving them for usually a specific purpose, or they specifically say, "I want this to go to outreach," or they say, "I specifically want this to go to the food closet for the Southeast Alaska Food Bank." Um, the landscape and garden is something a little bit new. That was um, added because of the, um, the planters that were out here. And so the funds that are in there are designated for the planters. And we had donations from that. Uh, the other thing that's new is the holiday market. Uh, those funds were put into a different account instead of the um, the galley account. So you'll see a balance there. The additional items, um, there's memorial gifts in total of, at the end of this year, of $5,275. And all of those memorial gifts were designated for the front door to help fund that. Um, and of course, we haven't had any expenses yet because. We just got that front door. Uh, the other thing that was designated for the front door is the front door donations, which says that, the 500. And then um, the deanery grant, um, I believe, could be used for anything. But I think that the vestry designated that for the front door if we needed it. Were there any questions on that section? If we're going down to the, uh -huh. I have a question back on the 2023 budget, mm -hmm. and it deals with the pledges. What the vestry approved our last meeting, the <coughs> pledge number was eighty-one thousand seventy-six, and I see it's now six hundred dollars less. Was a pledge yeah. removed, or was calculated wrong? For what the vestry? <coughs> yeah, I. Hi, Jeff. I don't know if you want to speak to that. Uh, that's a result of pledges coming in late and some being revised late. Okay, there was reduced. That's why I just wanted to know it's only $600, yeah, I mean, but it, we noticed it did affect the bottom line. I wasn't looking to see what if I made a mistake. I can attribute it to something else. <laughs> All right. Okay, so going down to the designated fund, which is the St. Brandon's Galley Maintenance and Improvement, and then there's a Maintenance and Improvement Emergency Fund, um, and you can see that um, St. Brandon's 
galley, the final balance is $6,962.72. Uh, the ending balance for maintenance and improvement is $20,221.05. And then the emergency fund is still $9,000. And the, if we do need funds, additional funds for the door, um, that would end up coming out of the maintenance and improvement. And we don't actually have the invoices yet. Soon, I'm, I'm guessing they're coming soon. Yeah, so the invoice will come, and then, yeah, I'd say then should put them on. Okay. So you printed this galley payment. Is that um, the payment that came out of that, especially this year with COVID, is that for um, donations to food bank? Or? Um, I don't believe any of it was donations to food banks. Some of it was... Actually, Carla, do you want to speak to some of what was spent out of there? I don't specifically know what the five thousand dollars. Well, it, it's an, right. there was a five hundred dollar expenditure that went. Some of it went to purchase gifts. Yes. Right. We had to use it for some things. Um, a little bit of that money was used to buy turkeys and some Thanksgiving items for that um, fundraiser that we participated in. I don't know the, the full extent right now of that, but. Yeah, it was. There was um, expenditures for Thanksgiving. There was expenditures for JYC. Yeah. Um, and I know that when I spoke to those involved in St. Brendan's Gallery, they did want to use those funds for some community things because they didn't want it just to sit there and not, right. not have yes. it. Was there any other questions for the 2022 portion? So if we move on to the 2023 budget, this is what we're proposing. Um, are there any questions on the 2023 portion of the budget? And as I said, we added clergy search. Um, because there is going to be six months. Something else that we added that really isn't part of this and you can't see it because this is kind of truncated and in, in a summary is that we the the vestry also added or the budget committee added a section for um, the search of clergy um, not just the clergy search but also for the interim priests because we are going to have some expenses for um, when mother caroline is not doing the services anymore um, part of the year for about six months so we did allocate some money for that did you say that that is part of this five thousand dollars? No, it's I, it's under support of the ministry, and that's why oh, okay. you can't really see it. Because it's not broken out there. But I did want to mention it because it is something kind of new for our budget. Thank you. Um, was there any other questions? There is a, if you wanted to see something more detailed for the 2022, out here every month I put these detailed um, reports. So you can look at those and it does tell you what is um, going on. And these are by quarter for the designated accounts. Um, and then we also have a breakout of our um, cash standing and um, our other investment accounts. I think that's it. Good job. Thanks, Lori.
Okay, um, Rob, would you like to talk about the cell tower? Sure. <laughs> approximately 50 feet by 50 feet. Um, they, we also learned that uh, there's two other sites that they're surveying here in the upper valley. So there's a possibility of three sites. Uh, the uh, costs associated with the cell tower will all be borne by Verizon. And Verizon and Lynx, who is their representative, will take care of all of the permitting. Uh, they also were going to do two site survey. On January 10th, their representative was out here and walked the property with uh, Dan and uh, Chuck. So they went all over looking for potential sites here. And we do own a lot of property here, if you're not familiar. It's, quite a large home. Um, it's anticipated at some point in the next two to three months Verizon will make their choice. That's basically all that's transpired so far. Uh, the next steps, if St. Brendan's, first of all, if St. Brendan's is not selected, it's all over. If St. Brendan's is selected for the side of the tower, uh, Lynx will come back with the Verizon representatives and they'll do what they call a lockdown visit. They will actually select this 50 by 50 thereabouts uh, piece of land that they want to uh, use. We have been encouraging them to put it on the little L of our property that goes back towards um, Taku Boulevard. Our property is big, but it's got a little notch back over there that's close to the road, close to the utility, so they won't have to tear up much. That's the area where we're recommending to them. But anyhow, they will uh, select the, last, the, the exact location on the property that they would like to put the tower. They'll come in, they'll do some drilling, soil sampling to find out if it'll support the foundation that they want to put in. Uh, they will then prepare a design and construction permit or project for Verizon to accept. If Verizon accepts the package, they'll send it to St. Brendan's for us to review. Uh, we still have no commitment at that point. If the vestry elects to accept this um, proposal, then we have to send it to the standing committee of the diocese. So they have to approve on it before we can proceed. And then if all parties come to an agreement, a lease will be drafted with Verizon and St. Brendan's. The lease, what they're looking for is a five-year lease with four or five renewals. Um, they're willing to pay us for this 50 by 50 square, $1,400 a month. That's almost $17,000 a year for the lease of this um, space. Um, we don't know, but we're assuming that after the end of the five years, the rates can be renegotiated again, that we're not locked in on this $1,400 a month for all 20 years or 25 years. There's some question whether it's four or five year extensions or whether it's 20 years total. 
that's something way down the road or when the lease gets uh, negotiated. Uh, there's been, we did research on it, primarily Dan did the initial research. Um, there's a flyer available if anybody would like it from the American Cancer Society dealing with the health issues. Um, the American Cancer Society, the quote on there, when, once you get through all the uh, information is, the bottom line is, so far there is no evidence in any published scientific report that cell towers cause health problems. That's not from Verizon, that's from the American Cancer Society. And uh, finally, the information that has been provided so far and presented to the vestry that if selected, the vestry supports going ahead with this project. It, uh, it's a guaranteed stream of income. It's not taking up huge amounts of the land here. It's a, approximately 50 by 50. It may be smaller. We question them about um, what's going to be there, whether there's a risk factor or not, and their, their backup power, they indicated, would be less than 50 gallons of fuel on site, so it's not a thousand gallon tank sitting out here. But it ultimately, everything looked like it was going to be a good deal for St. Brendan's. I'll attempt to answer any questions with Dan's backup here. He's the one that's been dealing with these folks more so than I have. But we're, we think it's a good deal. Construction, if selected, we're still in the if selected space. We don't know for sure where the other two sites are other than the gentleman that was here on January 10th indicated that there's some forestry service land that they're looking at for a possible alternative. The third site, we have no clue where it's at. Yes, Tamara? Will they put an access road into that area? They have to the access, yes. They will be putting in an access corridor, road, whatever, to wherever this plot of land is. That's another reason we're hoping they select over here rather than someplace off in this direction. And then, what, did you look into the impact on our property taxes by any chance? Okay. No. Should, mm -hmm. It shouldn't have an impact, but... Oh, I'm pretty sure it will. Because <laughs> we're, we're exempt on our income, or 80% well, exempt. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Or some, so. um, I'm sorry, Tom, I didn't hear Oh, I just wondered if we looked into the impact on property taxes. Yeah. It's a good question to ask. It, it is, and these are, can I just? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll come back to it if, if there are any other questions first. <laughs> okay, so. Um, oh. I'm sorry, I, um, it, what I did, you're asking for us today. This is just an information okay, so you're at this point. Okay, not asking for a vote or anything. No, it's, it's all being handled within the vestry. Yeah, so that, that's a good point. Um, as, Bob, as Rob said, the next section, the next time they come, if we're selected, is this lockdown site, and then we start, you know, looking at it. We will come back to the congregation, the vestry will, before any final decision is made just to make sure that the whole congregation is on board with this. It's not something we want to, you know, just have the vestry be part of it. Um, there are a lot of questions like the property tax and what the value of the land is and what the permitting is, uh, but we just take that as a step at a time. And this company, Lynx Incorporated, this is what they do. That's all they do is put up cell towers. They've put up three in Juneau, and um, they're familiar with the permitting process and working with the city. Um, but these things just kind of come along in, in steps, and you will be hearing back from us 
any time any big decision is made. Also, it has to go before the standing committee. I have kept the standing committee apprised of this from the very beginning. I've sent them just about every email I've, I've received. I've sent them any report that I've done, any notes that we've taken. So they're well aware of, of uh, what we're doing, what's being proposed. Um, so, like we said, we found out about this back in October. Was, was it October? Uh, yeah. The, okay. We found out about it in October, and the teleconference with them was the November best meeting. Well, I remember it was whenever Mark Bess's funeral was. Just before that, I was sitting back in that room doing a, uh, working on the bulletin with her, and Car uh, Carla comes back and says, somebody wants to talk to you about cell phone towers. And I took the phone and I said, I'm really busy right now. Can you call me later? <laughs> and they did call back. So they're really, really interested. Um, so yeah, so it's been since then. And it wasn't anything we wanted to keep from the congregation. This has always been open in, in the vestry. It's been on the agendas. It's been in the minutes. Um, it's just that there really wasn't anything to report. So, you know, now that we've got this step where they did come and do a, a, an initial on-site visit and said, yes, they like what they see, we're in the running, but they also have two other places, um, you know, that's where we are with it. The other thing real quick about the, the uh, little uh, information about the health effects of cell towers, if anybody wants that, I will, I have a copy of it and I will give it to you. Um, it's, uh, there's a big, the, the uh, link for that is about that long. So when I give it to you, I'll also email you the link rather than trying to write it out and have you copy it because as he mentioned, the, the, uh, the American Cancer Society uh, that's what they say, but down at the very bottom of that piece of paper, it says, click here if you want to know what they say. So you go to another site, and there's about, and that's specifically on the American Cancer Society site, they specifically talk about all the research that's been done and, you know, where they're, where they're coming from on it. So, um, that's all. Yep. Is there any noise pollution associated with it? No, not that they're, they're telling us no. And all we have to do, we can, we can find out from other people who are near a cell phone, I mean near a cell tower, and ask them. Um, if you go out towards um, just past Lock Bay, the two that are up on the hill there, the guy that owns that house is a former student of mine, and I can ask him. They're like right in his yard practically, so. <laughs> questions but that's that's where we are we're still we haven't been selected this may be all for not um, I hope we get selected personally because I think having that steady in stream of cash in here that's guaranteed um, would be very beneficial to the future of this church as far as being able to have guaranteed income um, I personally am concerned that we're not going to be selected because the site that's right around the corner over here, I, I personally think is a better site. It's already starting on raised ground. So, but we'll know with probably within the next 60 to 90 days if our site, if this site is selected. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't that be more complicated for them? To deal with the federal? I, I don't know. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Um, Daisy was wanting to know if it would be more complicated for them to deal with the federal government than the Diocese of Alaska. And, uh, I don't know. The, the, as Dan stated, this Lynx Corporation, all they do is consult and install towers throughout the United States at least. I don't know if they do foreign or not, but that's their only job is installing towers. So I'm sure they've dealt with the federal government before. We did ask them 
around the United States, there are, I guess, considerable number of towers that are on church property. They tend to want to go that direction. I don't know if they get a tax benefit because the payments are going to the church and they're deductible or whatever. I have no idea what the background is, but um, the tower, that they have numerous towers on church property. Uh, we didn't get into it. We discussed in the vestry briefly, well, maybe we can put a bell on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's not that far-fetched. If you, yeah, I really encourage everybody to just Google this kind of stuff because if you Google um, sell bell towers, they actually have these really nice looking towers with clocks in them and bells in them and everything. Um, but you know, they're probably in places where they can drive right up to it. Material is really cheap. Um, and they really want to put it in that spot so they'll do anything they can to, uh, you know, that the people who own the property will, will accept it. But take a look at it there. The cell tower, the ones we, all the ones we have in Juno area, these these big posts with the, you know, the things that hanging off them. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, t talk to the vestry about this. You know, if you got any any concerns, don't don't wait. Um, in December, Barbara Month came to the vestry and asked for approval of establishing um, a green committee to talk about St. Brandon's um, work with the environment and uh, things we could do and things we should do and. Um, so uh, I want to turn this over to Barb to talk about what that committee might be, and if you are interested, um, is there a form on the, in the committee list? It's, there's a on that committee list. There's a, a space for to to sign up to put your name in there if you if you want. presenting to, um, to the vestry. It says this committee, um, it's, its tasks are research, education, networking, and periodic reports to the vestry about actions that would help our church and our members reduce negative impacts on our planet. Uh, this committee has no budget, so specific projects and expenses will retire vestry approval. Um, it, we, uh, this, this wasn't just my idea, it, it came out of the book club that we had this fall where we read this book, Saving Us, um, about um, climate changes, a climate scientist case for hope and healing. It's a very uh, well-written, um, informative, um, and I think motivating um, book. Um, and that's why, as we finished up reading this book, we thought that we should talk to the vestry and see if we can establish a group to start seeing what we can do. Um, it's also consistent with um, a resolution that was passed by the diocese in 2018 called, called a call to the Diocese of Alaska to take action on climate change. And one of the resolutions in that was that um, <coughs> Members of the diocese continue to explore and implement improved environmental stewardship in their individual lives, their families, their congregations, and their communities. Um, and thinking about it a little more specifically, um, climate change is, tends to be a, sort of a touchy subject for people not wanting to think about it or read about it, um, feeling guilty, which isn't useful. Um, Obviously, nothing that we do is at, at this church is going to um, is going to cure climate change. Um, but none of the, no matter how much food we collect here, we're not going to we're not going to end world hunger. Um, but we're doing our part, and we're doing what we feel called to do locally. Um, many important things start locally. So uh, I think we would be first gathering a lot of information about what's already happening in Juneau, what other groups are operating what other churches might be doing, um, legislation, um, 
And out of that, I suspect we would be doing maybe some educational activities um, and continuing to network with um, a group here in town called Interfaith Power and Light. Uh, which is an interdenominational group. Carolyn has been involved with them. And the church is actually a member. And we are a member, yeah. Um, and uh, of course we'd be reporting to the vestry about quarterly or more often if needed about what we're doing, um, about anything that we were proposing that might involve expenses to the church. Um, uh, so that's it, the vestry um, gave us their approval and uh, so far the committee is me and Sherry and uh, Jackie Schultz um, and if there's anybody else who would like to talk to us about it um, please do if you have any questions right now I'll be happy to answer them as best I can are you going to establish regular meeting times Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I think as, as I thought about it in more detail, I think a, a lot of the first activities is just going to be gathering information about what's already going on here in Juneau and in Alaska because there is quite a bit. Um, and um, so I'm excited about it and um, we'll take, see where it leads us. That ends our official business here in the vestry. Um, my departure has been alluded to, and so I want to let you know that. Um, the bishop has agreed to extend my permission to me to remain here. I was supposed to end in, in, in March, but, um, but he's going to extend it to the end of June. Um, most likely I will be staying here until the end of June. It might be earlier, but um, uh, I do think that I need to get out of the way so that you can complete your work on your profile and start your clergy search. Um, you can't do that while I'm here, um, so I think it, it is time for you to have a chance to move into your transition, and I'm, um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me. Um, I think that this is going to be a good time, and I think that this is going to be um, a time of adventure and possibilities. Um, I am with Rob that I really hope that the cell tower um, does happen because that will also provide some financial stability that will help you appeal to new clergy. So, um, I also wanted to let you know that the bishop will be doing a visitation here on February 26th, and so um, I encourage you all to be present. Um, and uh, I think that concludes our business, so I would like to I would dismiss our that's for me to with the Lord's Prayer, so why don't we say that now together? The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, uh, new vestry members and continuing vestry members, um, I'd like to meet with you in um, the classroom in Vesta Hall. And we have just a few short meeting uh, items of business. Thanks, Carol. Thank <laughs> you.